All right, guys, today we're gonna to talk about a laptop. Um, I haven't done much laptop coverage this year. I uh, got a few things we're gonna be covering. We, I think we covered the 15 inch Asus Razer. We're gonna be talking about, did I say Asus Razer? Asus Razer? <laughs> they, have a, they have a new shaving razor? Just roll the intro. Today's video is sponsored by Drop and the Sennheiser PC37X professional grade gaming headset. Sennheiser is known for their legendary sound quality and gaming headsets are known for their legendary suck quality, but now you can have the best of both worlds without compromising mic quality, making it the perfect choice for gamers and professionals alike. The detachable 10 foot cable and 3.5 millimeter plugs ensure maximum compatibility while running your own amplifiers without taking up an additional USB slot. To learn more about the Sennheiser PC37X from Drop, click the link in the description below. I think the only laptop we've actually taken a look at this year was the 15 inch Razer Blade. Uh, we also have a 17 inch Razer Blade Pro coming. Well, we've had it, I've been testing it. But today we're gonna be talking about something else because you know, it's funny when it comes to laptops, most brands are like, we wanna send you our flagship model, the best of the best. Like we've been talking with HP about taking a look at one of the Omens, like the dual screen Omens. And it's like, not everyone's looking to spend three, four, five thousand dollars on a laptop. So today we're gonna be taking a look at the Asus GU502G. This is a mid-tier laptop that gives most of the performance that you would want for a mobile solution here. That's not only powerful for gaming, but also has a clean aesthetic that you wouldn't be embarrassed to use this in the boardroom. And it is configurable. So of course your mileage is gonna vary depending on the way you spec yours out. But the reason why this is the G variant is it has a G-Sync panel built in. It's 144 Hertz IPS G-Sync panel. So that's already awesome. I love the panel technology advancing like it has over the last several years to where we can get a 144 Hertz G-Sync IPS panel in a laptop. But of course you need, for 144 hertz to even matter, you need a powerful enough GPU. So this is using an RTX 2060. The rest of the specs though, nothing brand new. It's an Intel 9th Gen 9750H. It's got 16 gigabytes of DDR4, 802.11ac, a one terabyte PCIe NVMe SSD in there. So they already could be teaching Razer a thing or two about actually putting in decent sized SSDs because even the Razer Blade Pro maxes out at 512 gigabytes of SSD storage, which is ridiculous on something at that price point. So kudos to Asus for including a one terabyte. I'm curious as to what the serviceability of this is like, based on kind of what I just went through with showing you how to tear apart the Dell system for my niece's laptop, not very easy to use or service, but I think Asus knows that a lot of end users of this tier laptop are probably gonna wanna upgrade things like memory in the future or a bigger SSD. I'm curious if there's even room for expansion to put another drive in there. Uh, but I think the only thing we're really gonna get in here besides this box of, that kind of seems like a waste of a box, to be honest. Couldn't they have just? It may not look like a like complete brand new unboxing because it's kind of not. Asus, uh, this comes from their review inventory, so it's probably already been reviewed once or twice, um, but not by me. So it's still a new to me laptop. It's got a nice, it's very plasticky, but I like that this is this kind of a matte finish instead of like the metal, because I'm telling you right now, this thing is a finger magnet. As with any brushed aluminum or metal chassis that's black, finger oils and stuff get everywhere. This is a lot more resilient when it comes to not showing fingerprints and stuff. Um, the keys are all flat. They're not domed or concave. They're a very short throw, so it might take some use, getting used to to type on it. But of course, you're, that's gonna depend on you and, and how quickly you adjust to keyboards or whether or not you've typed on a laptop for a long time. I kind of suck at typing on laptops. They tend to feel a little bit more squished, um, but that's besides the point. You can see we've got a very thin bezel, um, not edge to edge, but still large enough to where even though this is a 15 inch laptop, it's not being made bigger because we have a fat bezel on there. But in terms of the construction and the flex and the rigidity of this, as you can see, that's a pretty strong hinge right there. I don't know if you can see that. That's, that's staying in place. But the true test is whether or not I can open it without it folding back. That's the thing I always like to test. Ooh, look at that. So a hinge that's too tight will pick up the whole laptop with it. And a hinge that's too loose won't keep its position. So I think they've done a good job at keeping this just the right amount of tension. There is a little bit of flex. I don't know what you would expect otherwise. Um, it is a metal panel with a you know regular screen in there, but the hinges are on the very edges. So there is gonna be a little bit of flex, but no creaking and it doesn't feel abnormal. It's not anything that would concern me. In terms of rigidity though, it is a magnesium body. So it's not aluminum or aluminum, it is magnesium, which is the same stuff I believe the Corvette frame was made out of for the longest time, which is why when they caught fire, they were a spark show. When Corvettes caught fire, they were fun to watch. So don't set this on fire? 
Well, if you want to see all kinds of neat colors and melting, sure. But as I mentioned, the panel is 144 hertz, three millisecond. So we'll be checking for things like ghosting. Um, I don't think we'll, I, I don't think Asus would stoop to using a crappy enough panel to where we'd be having ghosting at a high refresh rate. The problem with high refresh rate is if the pixel um, or response time can't keep up with the refresh rate, then you get ghosting where you'll have that trail, like kind of a, a, a smudged image of it. And the faster things move, the more ridiculous it looks. Absolutely the worst case scenario for a gamer in my opinion, especially if you're doing like shooters. But if we look at the bottom here, you can see um, we've got a decent amount of airflow. So we've got various intake fans. Looks like there might even be some downfire speakers right there. Um, yeah, so let's open it up and let's see what the insides look like. I'm really curious as to what serviceability on this would be like. Now, speaking of serviceability, it's gonna be made easy with my iFixit kit, the one that my wife bought me for Father's Day about two years ago. Fun fact, um, I now have communication with iFixit. They finally acknowledged me. I feel more successful than when I got 2 million subs, but that's besides the point. Anyway. So we're just gonna be using a Phillips here. Looks like they're Phillips all the way around. This does not have a removable battery, unlike that Dell where you click a button and the battery comes out. So while I've got the laptop upside down, I might as well point out that not only does Asus have thick rubber feet at the front and even thicker feet at the back to make a little bit more of an air gap for the airflow right there, they have a foot in the middle, which is kind of nice. So as you're typing and stuff, you're not gonna feel any flex in the center of the laptop kind of moving and bowing down. So that's just a sort of a stilt right there, I guess. It's so when you rage and you slam your hands on the keyboard. You Don't know. slam your hands on the keyboard on a laptop. <laughs> that's something I can say I've not done. That's like a positive point for this laptop. It has good airflow during raging. So just get in there and just sort of pry up a little bit. There we go. All right, so the battery here is a 76 watt hour. There's our one terabyte NVMe SSD. We can add another one right here, which is kind of cool. In terms of cooling here, you can see we do have um, copper heat pipes. This is probably some sort of a ceramic coat on here on the black. This is probably just to make it aesthetically pleasing because it, it's visible through here. See how it all blacks out? Otherwise, you would just see copper tubes through the bottom. But we have a heat pipe here for our CPU on this side. This is CPU, this is GPU. It's obvious because we have the GPU memory right there. So each one has its own dedicated pipe right here, as you can see. But then both of them have a larger pipe shared by also a smaller pipe. So in terms of temperature testing, we've had Heaven running now for probably 15 minutes or so. And we're seeing temperatures reach 71, 72. It clocked initially from about 1440 down to 1365. I think even though it's a full blown GPU, a lot of people are expecting to see the same clocks you'd get out of a desktop GPU. That's not the case because it doesn't have the cooling. I mean, as you can see, it's just got these tiny fans, one and then shared pipe from the other fan. Um, so with that scales, the performance. So what we kind of tested right here is what the kind of a worst case scenario would be. You can see now we're at 99%. Well, we dropped to 75 back up to 99, 71C. And the CPU is actually sitting pretty toasty too at about 85, 82. Now you might be wondering, Jay, this is an RTX card, so why are you running Heaven? That's an old test. Well, DX11 still pushes all those CUDA cores uh, for everything that they're worth when it comes to gaming. And I would never recommend turning on RTX features with a 2060. Um, I'm sure Nvidia gets salty every time I say that, but given the fact that you have to turn the RTX features down so low to, uh, to keep the 2060 from taking a performance hit and then turning on things like DLSS, which is also known as DLS super smudgy, for all out gaming performance, I highly recommend just leaving things with RTX or DXR features turned off. So with that said, you can see we're having right around 71C. So I've got these little rubber pads. I'm just curious, because the way that we can test, you know, whether or not a GPU um, or a CPU is getting enough airflow is that you can just sort of prop up the laptop. And what we found is when we did this, we dropped a couple of degrees, but not enough to make me feel like this is not adequate for cooling. So if I prop that up right now, we let it run for a couple of minutes, you can see we've already dropped a couple of degrees. And I feel like because those fan blades are so small and they're so close together, it's not a terrible tone. So even though we're pretty toasty, like the bottom side and the back, ooh, there's a lot of warmth coming out of there. I mean, this thing is under full load right now for the GPU. And normally if you're trying to game in a situation like this, the palm rest can get really hot and the keyboard can get really hot because some air does ventilate through the keyboard. It's not uncomfortable. I can actually feel a little bit of airflow. A little bit of heat right above where both the GPU and CPU would be because they're right around here. I could game like this. The, the pads are cool. So I think Asus has done a really good job at reflecting the heat 
um, using thermal, um, I don't know, that's some sort of a metal layer or something to kind of bounce the heat and make sure it doesn't come through the top, making it uncomfortable. And this is always my recommendation when it comes to mobile gaming like this. Get yourself a laptop cooling pad. That's what they're designed for. They're designed to give fresh, cool air to the bottom of the laptop. Usually they're just gonna look like a pad with a big fan on it that plugs in a USB and it's powered by your computer. You're not gonna want this sitting on your lap, especially if you wanna have kids someday. If you don't wanna have kids anymore, you don't have to pay for a vasectomy, just play with the gaming laptop on your lap for a while, you'll be sterile, I promise. So I wanna go in here now and kind of play around with some of that fan curve. So it's got a piece of software installed called Armory Crate. So this is sort of where we're set right now on an overall kind of a balanced. Okay, so you can set it between Windows, Silent, or Balanced. So it's gonna switch between Windows controlling the fans, the settings we set at the top, that first screen we were at, or um, silent, right? Like I already showed that. And then this is on battery power and plug power. So that's kind of neat. We'll leave it here to balance. It looks like under plug, we were under silent, which might've been why it was doing that thing where it wasn't ramping up. So let's see what happens to our Cinebench now. So yeah, look at that. 60s on more of the cores, four gigs all core. So I think right now we might, I bet you we get closer to 3,000. 3,062. <laughs> okay, so it's still running the test because we have it set to loop. That's obviously because of better clocks being maintained because of better cooling. So as you can see, you can go into the armory crate and then um, adjust all that sort of stuff. You know, it's funny. This particular laptop is about $1,600 as configured. Depending on how you configure it with the, the amount of storage and, and which GPU you put in here can really greatly vary the price. You can ditch the 2060 and go with a 1660 Ti, if, which is still perfectly fine for 1080p gaming. Without there being any overclock functionality though, um, it's one of those things where it is what it is. It's not like where I typically would stand on a desktop, buy a lesser GPU or something and overclock it more to match the performance of the tier above with saving a little bit of money. You can't really do that with this laptop. So that's why the 2060 might be a bit overkill for the 1080p panel if you're keeping settings at like, uh, you know, a little bit medium to high. You can run ultra 1080 with a 2060, no problem. But you can also get away with a, dude, look how much higher the core clocks are now. Oh yeah, geez, wow. That's why we were seeing like 10 FPS more right here. I mean, that's, that's what's exciting about having the 2060, but again, 1600 bucks. There is a ton of offerings in this price point. Between 1,000 to 1,500 is pretty brutal. And this one's a little bit above that just because it's a Zephyr, a Zephyrus, which is a, a very, I wanna say top tier brand with an Asus, but it's definitely above and beyond the entry level, which is why it costs a little bit more. And that's the magnesium chassis and all that sort of stuff. But as you can see now, we are maintaining much better core clocks, much better temperatures too, look at that. CPU at 63, GPU at 61. And that's the nice thing about air testing is it's not like water cooled stuff where it takes time for all the water temperature to increase. Um, you get nearly instant results with, with air. So if you guys are looking for a lightweight, I wouldn't say ultra thin, but very thin gaming laptop, damn, this thing is so light. Phil could put the weight actually up on the screen. Uh, I know they talked about the magnesium chassis being one of the things that allows it to be so so light. Well, this is definitely one worth checking out. I'll put the link to the description down below. A huge thank you to Asus for sending this to us for us to check out. And um, yeah, I'm highly impressed. If you guys have any other laptops you think we should take a look at in this particular price segment, let me know. We are gonna be doing some reviews of some higher end stuff coming up, uh, potentially the HP Omen. We've been talking to HP. Uh, I've also got, like I said, my Razer Blade Pro that I'm gonna be comparing to the 15 inch Razer Blade to see if Pro is even worth it when it comes to that particular piece of product. Yeah, look at these temperatures. 60s and 1500 and mid 1500s on the core. That's a huge improvement. Because who would have thought cramming more air through a heat sink would lead to better cooling? I'll tell you who did. This guy, right here. Did you invent air? No, but I consume it, which makes me an expert. All right guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.